What's going on, everybody? My name is Stefan Coons, and I am the CEO and owner of Pursuit Health and Performance, and this is the Everyday Pursuit Podcast. Welcome. Um, have, have you guys ever bench pressed? Have you ever done squats? Have you ever done any deadlifts? Maybe. Now, I don't, I don't know who's listening to this episode, but let's just say that you've been going to the gym. And, and the reason that I'm even like putting you in that category is because a lot of people that listen to this, they're actively going to the gym. Uh, actually, in fact, a lot of our clients before they came to us weren't just doing nothing. Some of them, but a lot of them were actually already going to the gym. They just kind of didn't know what to do at the gym. And that's probably the number one issue I see. And that's why I made this episode. Um, also because all of our coaches at pursuit just had a debate, um, about what lifts were best, right? So if you've been around fitness for just a little bit, you've probably heard doing like a squat, right? And this is usually just like, it could be non barbell, but usually it's like a barbell squat, a barbell bench and a barbell deadlift, like squat, bench, deadlift. Those are your three core pillar exercises. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to agree and say they're pretty solid, but, um, if you look at the title, what else are you guys missing out on, right? And so the way that I look at it is a squat is a great, and I'm going to break these down movement by movement, and I'm going to tell you why they're really good movements. That way, when you leave this episode, you're not like, oh, cool, the squat bench and deadlifts are great, but why? Why are they great? Why should you do them? All right, here we go. We're going to dive right into it. But I'm going to also, wait, before I go, I'm going to also tell you at the end, right, after I'm talking about the three that we already know, which ones I would pick that I might even replace with the barbell back squat, the barbell bench press, and the barbell deadlift, right? I'm going to tell you, and I'll tell you why. All right, so a barbell squat. As humans, we actually don't squat that much on two feet. And if we do, it's almost never weighted. So I actually think functionality, it's not a really great exercise. However, because you're under that load and doing that movement, here's the benefits, okay? Number one, it's going to burn a lot of calories. And I know you might say, well, what? Just listen up. It burns a lot of calories because it's such a taxing movement and it really does break down, you know, your, your quads, your glutes, your hip flexor, you know, your core, if you're bracing right. It, it really is kind of almost a full body workout. And if you've ever done a hard set of squats and you get off, it's just like doing sprints. Your heart rate is through the roof, you're exhausted, you're sweaty. So it's a great, great calorie burning exercise. And now that's not maybe the number one benefit, but for most people, they want to get toned. You squat three days a week, you probably don't really have to do much cardio. Like if you're actually doing like, you know, five sets of 10 of squatting or something, I'm not saying to do that three days a week. That's a lot of volume. Just if you did. Okay. Um, number two, it breaks down your, your legs, which are basically like one of the biggest muscle groups in your body, maybe besides your like back, you know, your, your, your lats and all your other lower back muscles, but your legs are huge muscles. And so it's very like not only calorie expensive, but to repair that muscle, like if you've ever done a leg day and they're just torn up, you know, you're going to get that too. And it does help with mobility in, in your ankles and your joints. Um, I will say though, and probably doing single leg stuff makes more sense because when we're hiking, walking, um, riding a bike, everything, it is one leg at a time because we're bipedal humans. And I'm going to get into that a little bit um, later. Then the bench press is great uh, just because it really does develop your chest, but it also works your back, uh, especially a barbell flat bench. You're working your lats more than you think, right? You're working those back muscles um, and you're working your triceps and your shoulders. So it really is like that front muscle, right? Like, and the reason that I think people categorize like, oh, do these three, because you don't need to do uh, a million different exercises, especially in the last couple of years when social media has become really popular. You see people that say, oh, you should do this or you should do this. And there's like all these crazy BOSU, you know, quote unquote, I'm doing quotes right now. If you're not watching the video, functional exercises. Um, and I am actually a fan of some of these, but if you stick to the basics, you might even get better results because it's doing the basics more frequent, doing it with the right volume and the right time under tension. Those are the things you need to manipulate, not changing the exercise, okay? So a bench is a really good, just anterior chain, front of the body exercise. Um, and then a deadlift, right? A deadlift 
arguably is one of the most functional exercises because as humans, I mean, maybe not in 2022, okay? Because in 2022, we basically don't have to do anything physical. I'm just saying as human beings years ago, we're lifting a lot of things. And when you lift things, you know, and you're doing, let's say like a sumo deadlift or a conventional, you're using your back a lot and your legs a lot. And if you're deadlifting correct, which is pushing through the ground, then pulling, um, a squat and a deadlift are very, very similar. Uh, you know, as far as like some of the muscles that are being used, obviously a deadlift is more hamstring dominant and glute dominant and, and for your lower back, but they're very, very similar. So those are the three and those are kind of why people do them. Oh, sorry. The deadlift activates probably about 80% of muscles in your body. Like if you're deadlifting, even if you're doing four sets of 10, everything in your body is as tight as possible. So it's training your muscles, but it's also training your brain and your CNS, which is your central nervous system. So overall, three amazing exercises. I think generally they should be the staple of anybody's exercise routine. Um, however, you don't have to use a barbell. You can use machines. You could do whatever, but it is a, a hinge, which is the deadlift. It is a push or press, which is the bench and a, a squat, right? So those movements, squat, push, pull, um, uh, hinge, press, lunge, like those are kind of like the staples. So that's what I think. I mean, that, those are what I think the benefits are. Now I'm going to tell you what exercises that I feel like you're probably missing. Um, if, if those are your main focuses and you're not really like going outside, because I've, I've talked to a lot of men online that are like, oh, well, I do squat, bench, deadlift. I do it three days a week, blah, blah, blah. And then like, they do probably some auxiliary stuff, but here's some big compound movements. I feel like you're probably missing out on, sorry, I got kind of a runny nose. Um, so number one, let's go, let's go and compare. And I'm going to say, like, if I had to substitute the squat, the bench and the deadlift, this is what I would substitute them with. Okay. Uh, and it's not going to be like tat for tat, right? It's not gonna be like, oh, well that's just as even it works the same muscle groups. No, it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I want to get as close as possible for a good lower body movement for a good upper body movement for the ones. And I'm going to tell you why too. So number one, it would be a step back reverse lunge, probably barbell, or it could be, you know, uh, with a bar on your back or front loaded. And I almost think front loaded would be better. And here's why. Um, number one, the lunge, like I said in the beginning, it makes more sense. Like we don't really do anything on two feet besides stationary jump and stationary standing, right? Think about it. What do you do on two feet? Not a lot. You're basically on one foot all of the time at one foot at a time, right? Like if you're walking, if you're hiking, if you're hiking and you're like, I'm tired, big steps, big ass lunges. That's basically what you're doing. Um, if you're riding a bike, it's one side at a time. If you're running, you're literally basically jumping from foot to foot when you're jogging, when you're walking, you're still on one foot at a time. So why are we doing all these dual leg exercises? I mean, I know why. But like, it doesn't make sense. You would actually, it makes way more sense to train unilateral, which means one side at a time, like lunges, single leg, leg press. And the thing too, is if you're doing squats, I guarantee a thousand percent, you're compensating with one side, one side's pushing harder than the other. Um, and I've seen some people cause a lot of like pain and injury. I'm not trying to scare you away from squats, but you should definitely be training one side at a time, because you're also going to see like, wow, my right leg's way weaker or wow, my knee's caving in. And then you can kind of see your just like anatomical discrepancies and you got to push the knee out to the side. Like you, you need to film yourself doing these exercises. So I'd say <clears throat> any type of lunge is great. I choose to do a step back reverse lunge in a front loaded position, because if you're doing a step back lunge versus a walking lunge, you are actually on that leg for more time under tension. Um, I promise you, if you go do it, and if you have more questions about this exercise, DM me on online and I will show you. And I've made videos about this before. Like if you step back, as soon as that foot comes off, you're on that leg for more time than you would be if you step forward. <clears throat> so, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a functional exercise for so many reasons, but like just to build up your quad phenomenal. The reason I pick front loaded more than back loaded is because as humans, we carry things like this, like in front of us. Very rarely do you move, help your friend move his house, right? Like think about the most physical thing besides the gym that you do, like just to live. 
probably moving. I honestly can't think of anything more physical than like moving, right? If you move every couple of years, I hope your friends move. You're moving boxes and washers and dryers. Where's every, where's all the load that whole time, right? When we're picking things up or you're camping with your friends and you're like, go get firewood in front of you, in front of you. Yet I see so many people online and what are they training? They're training everything in the back of them, which to me has really not a lot of translation um, at all. And since I started implementing different movements, such as like the Zercher squat, which is basically you have a bar right in the crooks of your elbow. My back has actually felt so much stronger um, than it ever did doing like backloaded stuff. And the only time you're ever going to do, like check this out, it's really important. The only time you're ever going to squat 315 pounds on your back, I guarantee you, is in the gym. However, there's probably a lot more chance that you would squat 350 pounds by having weight in front of you in real life. Probably not that heavy, but like it could happen, right? You could have your friend carrying a super stupid, heavy piece of furniture. You're not throwing it on your back probably, right? You're probably carrying it with your hands. So more translation or more translation to like real life stuff. Okay, then we have the upper body movement. So instead of the bench, I would actually say a row, some type of row with your back. And the reason I say this more than like a lat pull down is because we don't actually do a lot of things above our head anymore unless I guess you have like super tall cabinets. Now I'm just playing. Like we don't, right? And we're not really doing like things where we're pulling ourselves up or pulling down, but we do some things where we're pulling things in. Now it might be like really, really minuscule, but think about when you open a car door. You're opening the door and you're like doing effectively a really lightweight, low row. Like we do pull things um, in towards ourselves. I would almost argue that we pull things towards ourselves more than we push things away. Just on a, like a normal day-to-day -day basis, we're like grabbing a glass. We're opening the cupboard. We're pulling out the dishes. And sure, we like put them back in, but I think your back gets used a lot more. And I know this because I've had like back injuries and like upper and lower and like knots in my upper back. And you will realize once it happens how often you use it. Um, I don't think, it, it's a hard point to argue which one's more important. But like there's so many different variations of rows and having like a big back, not only does it look good and look sexy, but it is very, very functional. And if your back is stronger, in theory, your bench press is going to be stronger because it outwardly rotates your shoulder blades and it does play a role in it. Then for the deadlift, this is a hard one because there's not a lot that, uh, that, that lives up to the deadlift. Um, but I would say probably doing... Some type of like, I'm going to, I'm going to split these. I know I said I was only going to do three, but I'd say some type of zercher squat. So that would be carrying weight in the front of you again, squatting. Okay. And if you do a sumo zercher squat, it's pretty similar to the deadlift. Um, or I would say, man, what's the other one? I, I'd say maybe like some type of RDL, which is, I guess it's a Romanian deadlift, but if you know the breakdown of them, it's a little bit different. And the reason that I would say, well, let's let's break down the Zercher squat. The Zercher squat, once again, front-loaded. We know that. Functional. It makes sense. Things we do. Um, also, what people might not realize about front-loaded exercises is, it, yes, it works your back a lot, but the front of your core, oh my lord, it works it, your core so much. Look at CrossFitters. They have these like huge, beefy, beefed-up cores with these big, blocky abs. Maybe that's not the look you're going for. Um, but I think they, a lot of them look pretty sick. I think they look like, like the fit ones look like Greek gods are just like strong and like functional. They do basically everything front loaded, clean snatches, deadlifts. They do a lot of front squats, I'm not saying they don't do back squats, but like a lot of front loaded exercises, front carries. So that's part of the reason they have like big beefy cores. Okay. Um, so I think a Zercher squat is, is definitely, definitely up there. Um, the RDL I think is almost a better exercise than deadlifts because most people, when they're doing a de deadlift and there's a couple types, most common type is a conventional. That's where your feet are like, you know, super narrow, right? And your hands are on the outside of your feet or your knees, right? So feet are in narrow hands are on the outside of your knees. Then there's a sumo where your feet are super wide 
and then your arms are inside. You could do cross grip, regular grip, it doesn't matter. Um, so I personally do both. I do conventional and sumo, but the reason I think an RDL is almost better is because we're not really pulling anything in that realm in other movements. It's a very it's it's efficient because the bar's close to you, but I think in life we actually round our back a lot. Like when we pick things up off the ground, we're not necessarily doing a hinging, but if it's heavy, we will tilt our pe pelvis, lock our back and we will kind of do more of an RDL. Like I've done it when I picked up a box, I'm like, "Man, I, am I going to like squat all the way down in a deadlift position or am I just going to bend over and pick it up?" probably bending over and pick it up. And you might say, well, Stefan, I don't care about moving. I don't care about lifting boxes, dude. Like I just want to look good. Great. Because an RDL and being able to lock your back like that and have strong erectors will make it so you can squat more. will make it so you can deadlift more, carry more, um, do any type of explosive movement better. And if you don't believe me, go look at heavy squats. Heavy deadlifts. Where's the first breakdown? The lower back, right? It starts to round. And I know you've seen people trying to PR on their deadlift and you're like, oh my God, you know, you want to look away. Like, oh, they're going to break their back. Um, the, the low back is one of the first things to give out, right? So, and, and I've had some really serious low back injuries. And since I've been doing a lot more RDLs, I hit my posterior chain. So that means all the muscles like in the backside of me, my, my glutes, my hamstrings, my erectors, all those back muscles. Um, and they're they say posterior chain because they're in charge of your posture, right? So I've been hitting all those more, doing zercher squats and all that. And in the past couple of months, my back has actually felt stronger than it's ever felt in its entire life, even pre-injury. Um, and I just feel like I'm not afraid of getting injured. When I first started getting back into lifting after my injury, I was terrified. Every lift, I didn't even think about it anymore. Um, because I've been doing other lifts that have more carryover and you want to know what? I'm thicker and stronger than I've been in a very long time from doing those movements. So I don't think, like, to wrap it up, guys, I don't think the squat, the bench, and the deadlift are bad. I think they should be part of your routine. However, you don't want to sleep on the lunges. You don't want to sleep on the rows. Um, and you don't want to sleep on either doing some type of like zercher. And you could do a zercher squats, lunges, all that stuff. Um, I guess you could, you know, when I say front loaded for the lunges for the first one, you don't have to do like a, like a front squat, front rack. You could do also a zercher style. Um, and then some type of RDL. You could do single legs, uh, RDLs, which is probably more beneficial because it's going to help your, your glutes and your uh, hip stability. But doing a dual leg is super beneficial too. Now, there's a lot of other exercises that I could have put in here, but I'm trying to just think the most bang for somebody's buck to put on the most amount of muscle mass that burns the most amount of calories. And by the way, all those exercises that I just said are pretty uh, high calorie burning exercises like doing front loaded step back reverse lunges. Yeah, gassed, so tiring. Um, doing heavy rows, depending on how, what you're doing, whether you're doing like a bent over row or a chest supported row, still pretty tiring, but not as tiring. And then if you're doing like a really heavy barbell RDL, yeah, that's exhausting, Like right? Maybe not as exhausting as a deadlift, but it's up there. Um, so it's just a lot of bang for your buck. And, it, and, it, and you don't want to complicate your workout routine in the beginning uh, at all. You want to keep it basic. The last thing, though, I want to tell you about that is don't think that you're too experienced for the basics. And this is something that I struggled with a lot. I thought, well, I've been lifting for, I mean, now I've been lifting for 15 or 16 years. But before I was like, man, I've been lifting for 10 years. Like I need more fancy stuff, which is not true. Um, and I'm like, I've already manipulated the volume. I've already done this. And the thing is I wasn't manipulating it enough. I would go from like four sets of 10 to four sets of 12 to five sets of 10. Cool. I manipulated the sets, but I didn't change up the movement. Oh, you're doing barbell squats. Well, now let's do heel elevated. Now let's do zercher. Now let's do pause squats. Now let's do box squats. Now let's do banded box squats. Now let's do pause squats. Now let's reduce the time under tension. Let's, you know I mean? There's so many variations. They're all squats. And so don't think that you need to like do, you know, a variation every week, but it's a squat is a squat. A lunge is a lunge. It's different stimulus for your body, but like the basic movements really never change, whether you're 20 or 75 doing workouts. And that's why a lot of people can have success following the same program. If myself, uh, coach Mike, coach Bryce, we all did the same program. 
literally the same that was already created, like it wasn't customized at all, we could probably all get really good results. Are we going to have some variation? Sure. But as long as the program was solid and it had a squat, a push, a pull, a press, a lunge, like all the basic things in there, we would be okay and we would probably make really good progress. And then maybe Mike's stronger than me or maybe Bryce has better endurance. So we adjust weight and we adjust volume, but we could all do it. We could all be really successful in it as long as we knew how to make the uh, the adjustments. So uh, um, yeah, and, and honestly, pursuit as well. Like, yes, we do custom workouts for people, but we also have in the past, and I think we're going to come out with a program that's more like, hey, we've created this program. It's just like one really solid program or maybe a couple. And then we're going to teach you how to mold and edit it because we realize that like, sure, some people need or will thrive off of custom programming. But to be honest with you guys, like there are some people that can do really well with just following a, a pretty basic solid program as long as that program is going towards their goal. And if your goal is to burn fat, build muscle, or increase your performance. And I'd probably say the burn fat and build muscle are tied, but the performance would be last, like on this one that we're creating. Um, if you're like, wow, I really care about performance, that's when you should probably get custom coaching because performance is very specific. But if you're like, I want to burn fat, I want to build muscle, and at, at, in that time frame, I also want to increase my performance, then that's probably a good program for you. Um, and that's kind of what, what, what you have to think of is like who, who and what is this program created for? If you found out that it is created for you and this and the science is sound, then sure, you maybe don't need custom programming. But if you want faster results and probably overall better results, it's, it's probably a good idea. Um, so that's my take on the three lifts, guys. I, I hope you found this episode super valuable. Um, my ask for you is that you do share this episode. You do like, you do comment. If you feel like it's worth it, please leave us a five-star review. That would be super, super helpful. And share it on your social media. If you have a friend that's lifting or you're, you know, you're listening to this on the way to work and you found it valuable, it would mean a lot because we don't run ads. Uh, we don't have any affiliates at this time. And so I want to make sure that I'm just giving you good information that you could go use. Um, if you do have any further questions, you can go to PursueHP.com. Uh, you can fill out a, a uh, application to chat with me. I'd love to chat with you about your fitness goals. And you can also check us out on social media. So you can go to Pursuit or it's at pursuit underscore HP on Instagram, on TikTok. Um, and you can see our videos. I post, first of all, I want to let you know too. I post a lot of content on Facebook. That's probably my number one um, platform. And I think it's like, I, I'll maybe put it in here. Stefan.coons.547. It's kind of weird. It's my personal one, but we also have a business one on Facebook. That's probably where I put the majority of my content. However, um, my Instagram has a lot too. And my personal one is at SK fitness underscore training. So I know there's a lot of different platforms. I wish sometimes for my sake, we could consolidate it to one, but that's just how it is. Go check us out. Um, go watch our videos. I make a lot of tutorials. That's what I've been doing lately, to be honest with you guys, breaking down form and how to do exercises and why to do exercises. I've been getting positive feedback on it. So I hope that you could it at least go there. And if you feel like you have specific questions about your goals, your nutrition, your training, um, you want some more accountability, you want a program that's going to help you burn fat, build muscle and increase your performance. Definitely don't sleep on it. Book a call with us. Um, and the time of this recording, we still have some really good holiday specials going on. We literally do no other sales any other time of the year besides Black Friday. We might extend doing some things this year, but um, that's my call to action for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you next time.